So if we've got multiple CHV units working together, so this is a cascade circuit, we need to tell it how many units are actually all connected. The way we do that is on SW6, we put on eight, nine, and 10, and you see the display there changes to 101. We then press the enter button till we get a display of 107, and then we can tell it how many units we've got. So here we go. So for example, let's say we had 10 systems all working together, you say 10 on there, once we're done with that, press the enter button and it accepts it. And then we can switch our dip switches back off. If we're gonna have a situation where we're having cascade, we're probably not gonna be looking at the return water temperature from this actual unit. We need to take an overall one, which is usually TH16. To do that, we need to tell it to look for SW5, number eight into the on position. And now it's looking for TH16. Once that's in place, we're all done as fast as part of the setup goes. What we're looking at doing next is setting up weather compensation. So if we weren't looking at a fixed water flow temperature, we're actually going to do weather compensation. So the way we do that is I can move forward to item 22 and we're going to start setting up the first point of weather compensation. So the first point we're going to set up is we're specifying what's the lowest out temp door temperature we're designed to and what flow temperature you're going to work on from that point. The idea of the weather compensation is as the outside temperature increases, the losses from your building are going to be reduced. Therefore, we don't need to have such high flow temperatures. Every one degree we can drop that flow temperature by will give you roughly a 3% energy saving. So if we could drop the flow temperature by say 10 degrees, that's a 30% energy saving. So that's what we're setting up now. So we're saying that first one is going to be set to, we'll say 45 degrees. So on the basis we're working on something like say underfloor heating. So specify the flow temperature. Once I've done that, I can specify the actual outside temperature, the ambient temperature reading. So there we go, 45 degrees flow temperature. Move on to the next one, so item 23. I'm going to specify at let's say minus five. There we go. Minus five, that's that first point done. Then we're going to look at 24 and we're going to specify what flow temperature we're going to have at the higher ambient temperatures. So we'll go for say 30 degrees at an outside temperature of let's say 15. So that means if the ambient temperature outside gets to 15 then it won't go any lower than 30 degrees. So. There we go. 15 degrees, so. And press enter. So just to summarize what we set up there on the weather compensation curve, if the ambient temperature is below minus five degrees, we're going to have a flow temperature of 45 degrees. As the ambient temperature outside increases, our flow temperature is going to reduce until it gets to an ambient temperature of 15 degrees outside, and then we're gonna be at 30 degrees. So if it goes above 15 degrees, it's gonna carry on at that 30 degrees flow temperature. So once that's all done and set up, that's your weather compensation ready to go. all that setup done all we need to do now is connect it up as far as water side goes and connecting as far as control structure goes so connecting say a BMS system or something like that the connections for that are all in the inputs and outputs box so that's on this unit here then we need to test it all up in heating and then hot water just to make sure it's all working correctly and you're good to go and play so thank you for watching and enjoy your Eka Day. Thank you.